Rub up your engines! Consumer Report says that, yes indeed, EV cars are more issue prone than gasoline and hybrid gasoline electric vehicles are. Now the original myth was electric cars, they're simpler than gasoline cars, they don't have all these parts and engines. Yeah, well, one, they're a lot more complex than what they try to tell you, they're all run by computers, right? It's not like you just got a battery and a little joystick and an electric motor, they're a lot more complex than that. But of course, it's new technology. What happens to new technology? They screw up all the time, and most electric cars are heavily computer run. Software's not right. Look at all the Elon Musk Tesla, it seems every day they have a software upgrade for some problem that they have in the things. Well, Consumer Reports found that the electric cars are actually less reliable, they have more problems. They've been making internal combustion engines for 100 something years, right? They got it much more down pat than they do the electric cars, even though they say, well, the electric cars are simpler, there's less moving parts. Does it really matter if they have more parts or less parts? if they're made correctly. A perfect example I give people is Toyotas. Their cars are just as complex as all cars today. Toyota dynamic force engine system, right? But they don't break very often, so you don't care. You're the consumer. You buy a car, it lasts and it runs good, it gets good gas mileage. It's complicated, yes, but if it doesn't break, you don't care. But on the other hand, if it's not as complex with less parts, but it breaks all the time, which are you going to buy? You're going to buy the one that doesn't break down. And the hilarious thing is, electric cars are relatively new, full electric battery cars, right? But they're showing to be breaking down more. They're not as reliable. They're not that old. What's going to happen when these things get old? Imagine a 10, 15, 20 year old electric car. We're really going to be in throwaway technology. Of course, the corporations love that. They would love you to buy something, and when it's out of warranty, it breaks, so you have to buy another one. So I can see why they're all pushing electric cars, because of course, hey, you can make electric stuff so it'll break down at any particular period of time. You can design it that, well, it's going to last so many hours, and then it shorts up. We had that up when I was a kid. We had an RCA TV, fancy console with the stereo and everything built in this nice wood cabinet, and the thing broke a month out of warranty. TV repairman comes and says, well, they all do it. There's this part here. It just breaks at that time. They made them that way. <laughs> <laughs> but at least back in those days, he was able to fix this thing in the way he went, right? Now it's like, well, you get another car now when it goes bad, right? And as usual, the EV people say, well, this is just the beginning. As we iron out the problems, it won't be that case. In the future, we will. Like Ford, years ago, they had some advertising campaign that says, quality is job number one at Ford. And guess what they're having now? Quality control problems. Did they fix it? No, they just put a slogan on it that means nothing. Okay, here's one I can't resist. Just insane markups on a Honda. John O'Reilly sends me this email. I can't help but laugh. He sees this advertisement, and here's what it says. You picked a great time to start shopping as we just started our model year-end sales event. 400 new Hondas. Scotty, it's a laugh. I went and looked at the 2023 Honda Civic Type R. The MSRP is 43000 They were asking $64,385. What is going on here? All right, well, what do you think is going on? Ripping people off. The Civic Type R is a very limited production, so they're going to charge whatever they can get away with. That's just how the ball bounces at automobile places, especially dealerships. They've only got a few of them. Each one may only have one Civic Type R. They're going to charge whatever they can possibly possibly charged. Even though they sent you this little flyer in your email that says, we got a great sale going on here, baby. Yeah, it's a great sale, all right? It's great for them to mark the car up. Advertising lies, is that a shock? I mean, our entire society is based on that stuff nowadays. Don't believe anything you see in an advertisement. There's always an asterisk somewhere, and most of the time, they don't even have the asterisk definition anywhere you can find. And I'll end it with the end of the email they sent him. In conclusion, if you are able to make it in, you'll get the best price of the year. <laughs> yeah, the best price of the year for the Honda dealer. Well, at least you watch the stuff you live and learn. You learn how not to get ripped off and how to stay away from these people. And don't get your mind set on some limited thing in car business, because if it is, they're going to charge too much money for it. That's just how it goes. Just like the Ford Lightnings. They just raised the price again. They're now 60 percent MSRP higher than they originally were, and they've only been out for like a year and a half, right? There's a limited amount of something they're going to rip you off, so don't buy the limited amount of stuff unless you're just willing to pay too much money for it. Girl says, how reliable are WRX engines? Okay, those are Subarus. Now, if you take care of them, back in the day they had problems with those boxer engines blowing head gaskets, but they fixed that. And the WRXs aren't the six cylinders. I would never buy a six cylinder Subaru boxer engines. They've had too many problems, but their four cylinder engines are pretty good. Only thing is, 
You don't want to over-rev them. Turbocharged ones do wear out a lot faster. Change the oil regularly, they are boxer engines, and they need more lubrication than a lot of normal engines because instead of it going up and down, they're sideways and they operate a little bit differently. But they can really hold up as long as you don't over-rev the things. Candy Cane 66 says, my car won't hold the charge. Got no one Ford Taurus, new alternator, battery, mega fuse, and it won't hold the charge. Now the fuel pump won't even kick on to keep the car running. Help me, I'm a single lady. First it wouldn't hold the charge, at least it was running. Now it won't even run. The fuel pump's not running. So the first thing you want somebody to check is the wiring from the battery to the ignition switch to the fuel pump fuse all the way back to the fuel pump. Sounds like you've had an electrical problem for quite some time. You could have a bad fuel pump, but that's easy to test. Any mechanic will just send power to it, see if it pumps or not, right? I doubt if it's the fuel pump because you said it wouldn't hold the charge. A fuel pump, when you shut the car off, the fuel pump doesn't get any power. So even if the fuel pump is going bad, that isn't going to make your car not hold the charge. Not holding a charge is an electrical drain. And in most cases, that's because wiring or a relay or something is shorting out and it's draining your car when it's shut off. So watch my video, fixing battery drain on your car. You get an idea how people test them, have those tests done. And then they'll say, oh, you got a big drain on this. We got to fix this first. The wiring shorted out. We got to fix that. That's where you want to start. Tyler Tran 34. 412 says, my car's misfiring after a full tune-up. Got 2,000 Lexus. A couple months ago, after replacing all the spark plugs and ignition coils, it's starting to misfire again. Why? There's many reasons a car can misfire. Let's say they bought cheap coils made in China, and they replaced them, and it worked, but now, a couple months later, it's misfiring again. Easily can be. They use cheap Chinese coils. On those, you really want to use the Nip and Denso coils that they come with. You don't have to go to the dealer. There's other places that sell them, but you don't want to use these cheap Chinese brand ones. Like, look at one of your coils and pull it out and look at it. If it doesn't even have a name on it. It's a cheap Chinese one. Denso is a really proud company and they have Denso written on all their coils stamped on it. You'll be able to see it. If there's no name, it's cheap Chinese crap and that could easily be the problem was cheap parts. Now let's say they didn't use cheap parts and they used Nip and Denso and it started to misfire again. There could be another problem causing the misfire or it could be a wiring problem. Have them check the ignition coil wiring first, the wiring that goes to the coil on plugs because if there's a wiring problem, especially a ground wiring problem, it will start to misfire. Just because that thing's old, it's 23 years old, you might try this and sometimes it will fix it because it can be that simple. Run a new ground wire from the negative battery terminal to the engine block and bolt it on. If your engine is not grounded correctly, then the coils won't work right and it will misfire. You got to have power and you got to have ground. So run a new ground wire first. And I fixed a lot of those old ones. The ground wires were just kind of worn because it was old and I would just run a new one from the negative terminal of the battery, metal bolt on the engine and it fix the problem. So have that checked out too. Kben J695 says, I have a flashing engine light on my 2016 Hyundai Sonata. I got 100,000 miles on it. My way home, I just bought it. The flashing engine light's coming on. I couldn't go higher than 60. I took it to AutoZone. It had P1326 powertrain system. Is it worth it to fix the car? If yes, can it cost a lot? P.S. I'm a college student. Well, unfortunately, you haven't watched any of my videos where I say do not buy Hyundai Sonatas. The 2016 has various recalls, including a problem with the the engine. The problem is you got 140,000 miles on that thing. Contact Hyundai to see if they're going to fix anything free. And then if they fix the engine free, great. I doubt if they will. If it is the engine going out, I'd get rid of the thing. I wouldn't fix it. I would just get rid of it take a loss. Well, you could always figure this is going to happen. Elon Musk is starting to ban critical journalists from Twitter. <laughs> he doesn't want people criticizing him on Twitter. He bought this thing Twitter and all people do is say a bunch of nonsense on it, criticizing everything. But now he's trying to control us so they don't criticize him, I guess. Well, it turns out that Twitter has banned several of these prominent reporters, one of them from the New York Times. They don't like what they're saying about old Elon, right? Hey, what is this? Russia? You know, you can't say bad things about Putin. They'll put you in jail or they'll assassinate you, right? And of course, people are trying to get around his ban. They banned that. They just put another name in. You can't ban stuff on the internet if you let people go in and out all the time. You know, they just change the name. Who didn't expect this? He buys the company. He wants to control what it says, right? So I don't pay any attention to any of that stuff. I think it's just total nonsense anyways. Corporations and politicians try to get images of themselves by having people say things. It's insanity that anybody pays any attention to this garbage anyways. Doesn't mean anything to me, you know? I'm out here helping people with their car problems. I don't care who says 
says what about who, who's wearing what, who's married to who. It doesn't interest me in the least. And for most people, you shouldn't waste your time looking at that crap. You want to learn things? There's a lot of information you can learn on YouTube. There's a lot of people helping people out. Watch that stuff. Don't see who's tweeting what. Who really even cares? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.